Hello and welcome back to another Royal Reviewer transmission and today I am going to try to unpick all the latest goings on with Harry and Meghan or what's been going on in New York for this uh, Women of Vision award ceremony and I've been r racking my brains about how to tackle this, where do I jump in and I think as always with me the best place to start is the beginning. So Let's just go straight into it. Meghan was, has won an award um, and the award has been given by her, her friend, I suppose. Um, now, what you can say a lot um, for awards being given by your friends, are they really awards that you've won if they've been given by an organisation that your friend owns, runs, has heavy involvement in? So there's that whole issue, but let's kind of sidestep that because that's not the juicy details, to be quite honest. I watched a video of Harry and Meghan arriving at the awards and they were ushered in through what looked like a car rental entrance. There was a, there was a Hertz car rental sign in the background. And as they were ushered in, there is footage from outside. It could have been a member of the public or it could have been one of the paparazzi who shouted and heckled Harry and Meghan as they were going in and there is no doubt in my mind that even through the noise of the throng of them arriving I think they would have heard the heckler and the heckler said Meghan how does it feel to be a part of two broken families yes and obviously they feigned that they didn't hear but I think they heard and even if Meghan didn't hear because she was first in Harry most definitely heard. So that was the beginning. Then obviously the award ceremony happened and she won the award and she gave a speech. What did she say? Um, I think she said, it's never too late to start. Um, you can be the visionary of your own life. There is still so much work to be done. And I'm sure things to sell out on the royal family included too. Anyway, it was to um, recognise her work for global advocacy to empower and advocate on behalf of women and girls. Yes, I think uh, marrying up, <laughs> marrying up to get m m more money and more fame is definitely the message that she's sending out to young girls. Always look for your next step. I think that's what she's saying. Anywho, Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, was also in attendance. I'm sure she was very proud of her daughter's achievements. Anyway, this award was set up by uh, co-founder Gloria Steinem uh, and Megan says that she's always read her magazines and things when she was growing up. Now, it was an award obviously sort of given by a friend, if you like, or um, by an organisation that has a heavy involvement with one of your friends. Is it really an award that you've won if it's one that's pretty much given to you by your friend? I mean, but that's not the juicy bit, is it? So let's just move on. So after the award ceremony, uh, they left and they left in, I do believe it is two black SUV vehicles. Um, I think they were in one and their team must have been in the other. Of course, they had their security detail, the one that they pay for all the time. And of course, they don't get protection from the United Kingdom in America. They don't, well, I think they have had it a little bit when they've gone back to the UK because I have seen them in with a police escort going to the airport, for example, although that was from a royal engagement. So uh, we know that one of Harry's court cases is to do with protection, but they don't definitely 100% don't have it in the US. They have their own paid for security detail. So in convoy, two vehicles, they left. Now, it was unsure, I think, by the press, it's claimed by the press, that they didn't know if they were going straight back to accommodation or whether they were going to a restaurant. Anyway, they decided to follow. Um, and I think this is what they were doing. I think they were following to see if they were going to a restaurant, blah, blah, blah. They wanted more photos. Now, there is an argument, of course, to be made, and I will preface uh, the rest of this video with the fact that I don't think it's okay to stalk someone and chase somebody. We've seen what happened or some of the results of what can happen with, of course, Harry's mother, Harry and William's mother, 
Diana, Princess of Wales. We don't want to see a repeat of that for anybody. That is unacceptable. Um, but I fail to understand how this can be a cat catastrophic sort of death chase, if you like, um, in New York, because I've been there myself. Admittedly, it was in 2005, so many years ago. And although my memories may be a little bit blurred, the one thing that I do remember about New York is that it's busy. It's busy as anything. And because of the grid system it's built on, there's always traffic lights. There's always crossroads and, and traffic lights. So unless you were literally speeding dangerously yourself through the traffic lights, um, you, it, it couldn't be a chase. It couldn't be, a, you know, this sort of two hour chase that's going on, especially at high speed, because there's, there's cars on the road. You'd have to slow down to get around them. You would have to be the, especially if Harry and Meghan are the ones being chased, they're the ones in front. So they would have had to have swerved and gone through lights or gone down different streets where they shouldn't or whatever. So I personally, I fail to see how it could be. Uh, I will also say that there hasn't been, I don't think, any video footage, any CCTV, for example, of the actual chase. I've seen footage of leaving. I've seen footage of changing taxis. That's another thing. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is go through some facts of the night and then we'll discuss those as we go. And we'll also discuss some things that are a little bit ambiguous as well. So, fact number one. Uh, Prince Harry and Meghan and Doria were in the same car uh, and were followed and photographed by paparazzi after the Women of Visions Awards in New York City. That is a fact. Uh, they were most definitely followed. And I don't think, as I said before, that people should be followed to the point where it is dangerous. But we'll get to that. Um, then there were a multiple paparazzi travelling by car and bike. Black Grid, which of course is the photographic agency that seems to be getting tipped off uh, about these different, about where Harry and Meghan are going to be, hiking, sushi, whatever it might be. Uh, so they were following, they had four freelance photographers and there may have been others from different agencies or newspapers or whatever it might be. And I think that's probably true. It seems like there probably was more than just the four, uh, the uh, Black Grid have confirmed. The Sussexes did travel by a blacked out SUV and then switched to a taxi. So there was a lot of talk online um, about did they leave in a taxi? No, they actually left in the black SUV and they switched halfway through into a taxi. There is footage of them sort of in the taxi and then taking off again. So if it was that dangerous halfway through, um, halfway through a car chase, a very dangerous catastrophic car chase, I very much doubt they would have been able to have, you know, hailed a taxi and then had time to switch and get in. Anyway, I digress. Um, so the paparazzi following them made transport challenging as the couple did not want to lead them to the private residence where they were staying. So it was a challenging exit from the awards ceremony. It wasn't just a straight, we leave, we go. Um, but I think choices were made. They could have just gone to where, wherever it is they were going. Yes, it would have exposed where they were. But once inside wherever it was they were, whether they were staying with a friend or whether it was a hotel, I'm imagining a hotel. But then again, if they've got a, a friend in New York, um, perhaps they stayed with a friend. Um, do we really need to know this as public? No. I mean, personally, I don't. I, I don't really see where they stay as being in my interest um, or where they have dinner or whatever. But, you know, I understand that some people might be wanting to know where they had dinner, where they're staying, who they're staying with. And you do have to, you know, bridge this gap between privacy and public interest. Personally, for me, there's no public interest in it because I'm not interested in where they're staying, where they're having dinner. Uh, but I do understand that for some people there might be an interest in that, although perhaps not a very meaningful interest. Uh, anyway, their journey was made challenging. And like I said, choices were made to make it, I think, more challenging by kind of, in a way, leading the chase. Um, if you're being chased, you have a decision. 
you know, do you carry on to your destination and they know where you are, but you do it safely? Or do you instigate a chase where you drive off and you try to decoy and it becomes more of a chase because of your actions? Um, I think choices were made. So the Sussexes tried and were eventually successful in losing the paparazzi. Uh, there were no injuries or collisions that was um, put out there by the police. There have been no arrests, again, put out by the police. And the NYPD and private security were involved in the incident. So officials were involved in the incident. So, uh, you know, unless these officials are lying about something, they did put out a statement, which I'll read in a little bit. Now, we move on to the disputed parts of this. Um, so the claims by the Sussexes that the paparazzi were highly aggressive, engaging in dangerous behaviour that was near catastrophic, we, don't, we haven't seen evidence of this. Um, and in fact, I've just watched a video where they are interviewing one of the uh, paparazzis that were chasing, that were following, and he had a hoodie on with his back turned to camera and he was voicing his opinions. And he, saw, he said that, yes, they were following, Yes, they thought that they were going to a restaurant and they wanted to get a picture of them arriving and leaving the restaurant, um, but that the dangerous chase was actually by Harry and Meghan. He said that they were driving about 80 miles an hour. Again, I don't know whether or not that's possible in New York at that time of night with the traffic um, and the traffic lights. They would have probably had to have stopped, you know, every time they come to a traffic light unless they were going through, which then would be dangerous. He said that it was Harry and Meghan making it dangerous, that they were following behind at 20 miles an hour. Do I believe they were following at 20 miles an hour? No, I don't. I think they were probably trying to keep up with Harry and Meghan, or at least keep Harry and Meghan in their sight line. Um, so I don't believe the 20 mile an hour thing. I'm not, I'm not that gullible. Uh, I think if you're following someone and they're going at 80 miles an hour and you're going at 20, then you you're going to lose them unless, of course, they stop at the traffic lights and you've got time to catch up, which is, of course, another option. Um, so another disputed fact is the paparazzi, well, it's not really a fact, the paparazzi driving resulted in near collisions with other cars, pedestrians and two New York Police Department's police officers. Again, that was alleged by the Sussexes and there is no evidence to support this. And, of course, the police statement supports the fact that this actually, that there wasn't anything resulting from that. Uh, the Sussexes security team were the ones driving recklessly. Again, as I've just spoken about, that was alleged by Backgrid. Again, unconfirmed. We don't know if they were going 80 miles an hour. We don't know if they were going 20 miles an hour. Um, we don't know if Harry and Meghan were driving dangerously. It's just what's being said. And until we have some CCTV footage, I don't think we're going to know. But I'm sure somewhere there will be some footage and I'll be able to do an update to this video. So another um, claim that could be disputed is that the car chase lasted two hours. Well, we don't know how long it lasted unless someone was timing it. Uh, then we, we don't know if that was indeed true. Uh, although I find it quite difficult that it would have lasted for two hours. That would have been one major game of cat and mouse, especially the time that they left the awards ceremony. I mean, who wants to chase for two hours? Maybe the Sussexes do. I don't know. But that would have been, to me, a bit of a pointless operation. Again, choices were made. If that was me, I think I would have been probably annoyed that I was being followed. I don't think I would have liked it if it wasn't something that I had planned or wanted or orchestrated or tipped off, then I probably wouldn't have wanted it. But in the interest of safety, if safety is your main concern, if uh, what happened to your mother is of primar primary concern, then if you're just being followed and they aren't trying to ram you off the road or do anything dangerous to you, then you have made a choice to actually make yourself the dangerous part in all of this by potentially driving recklessly and all the rest of it. So again, I think it's all about choices. Um, the paparazzi have a professional responsibility to cover newsworthy events and public fig figures, alleged by Black Grid. 
Um, is it black grid or back grid? I think I've been saying back grid, but I think it's black grid. Anyway, I do apologise for getting the name wrong. I'm going to say black grid from now on. Is Harry and Meghan going to a restaurant newsworthy? Personally, I've said before, I don't think so. So again, that is disputed. Paparazzi and journalists, professional responsibility to cover newsworthy events and public figures has limits to its extent into a private space or private lives. For example, paparazzi have a right to take photos of public figures as they leave a public work event. But once they get in the car and depart, it would be an invasion of privacy to follow them and try to locate where they are staying. I agree with that sentiment. Personally, I'm not interested in that. And I do think it probably is an invasion of privacy. But what we're really talking about is safety. I mean, Harry and Meghan, I'm sure, could take legal action against people that they think are invading their privacy. They have done so in the past. But what we're looking at here is actually this kind of claim of it being catas catastrophic and dangerous pursuit by the press, those that are following them. Whereas it seems to me very much like it was Harry and Meghan that were making it dangerous. Again, choices. So I, I don't actually think it's the privacy part that's important here. I think we can quite easily work out that that probably was an invasion of privacy and that Harry and Meghan could potentially take legal action about that. But what is the disputed part is whether or not um, it was safe, whether it was a safe chase. We definitely know that they were being followed, they were being um, pursued. But was it unsafe on the part of the Sussexes, or was it unsafe on the part of the paparazzi that were following? Again, going back to Harry and Meghan's security, in the United Kingdom, they would not have been chased um, in that kind of a way because there is an, uh, an agreement between the press and the royal family that when they leave events like this, that that is not the case. Um, that obviously originated from, as a result, a direct result of what happened to Diana, Princess of Wales, where there was more sort of understanding with the press about what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable, um, including, uh, for example, photographing and videoing when Harry and when William and Harry were at school, when they were at school age, including university as well, um, in exchange for regular photo ops and all the rest of it. So, and a certain amount of access. So, of course, Harry being in the States has lost any agreement with the British press, although we don't know the nationalities of the press that were following them in this case. Was it American? Was it British? Was it British tabloid? American sort of magazines? Was it just a black grid? Other nationalities involved? That we do not know at this point in time. I also am looking at a photograph of Harry and Meghan. I'm not sure if it was taken when they were in the taxi or in the SUV. I'm thinking it was when they switched to the taxi. Um, and obviously they were trying to sort of either decoy or, you know, get around the, the paparazzi. But they were not wearing their seatbelts at the moment that that picture was taken. And again, if you are in a catastrophic chase, I think you'd probably put your seatbelt on. That was one of the catastrophic errors that Diana didn't um, adhere to. She did not put her seatbelt on. So again, that's just a little bit um, dubious, um, I, would, I would think. There is also a claim that the taxi cab driver who picked them up uh, said that they were only in the car for 10 minutes. They were picked up and dropped off at the same location. After exiting his cab, they jumped into the blacked out SUVs that were following them. And they were the same black SUVs that were filming them. So were camera crews involved? I mean, that's another thing. Is this because of the court cases that are going on? It all kind of loops back to the court cases, one of which or a few of which involve Harry's security with um He's obviously taking it up with the Home Office here in the UK. Is it all a rouge? Is it all a rouge? Ruse? Is it all a ruse, a setup 
to try and get attention onto their security, to try and say, hey, we are unsafe, we are being followed unsafely, um, our safety is in jeopardy, we need security not only in the UK, but we also need it here in the US. I mean, perhaps they're even trying to get US tax-funded uh, protection, who knows? But is this going to be used by Harry and Meghan for any upcoming Netflix documentary? Maybe they're doing a series two, who knows? Um, will it be used as evidence for Harry's court case back in the UK? Um, I haven't seen evidence of cameras, but there may have been. I mean, this is one report uh, from, from the cab driver. So again, it's a possibility that they were filming for Netflix. It's also a possibility that they were using this as a kind of setup, if you like, to... Um, to feather their own nests in terms of helping Harry's security claim back in the UK. The the paparazzi who was interviewed with his back to the camera in the black hoodie, um, I don't think it was a set up chase, but I do think there is a possibility that they used it as an opportunity and went with it and grabbed it and you know, turned it into what it is. I mean, we're all talking about it, aren't we? I don't think many people would have been speaking about the award, but we're all speaking about this. By the way, that dress, what was it? Somebody, it was by somebody Ortiz. Um, yes, I don't, Jen, uh, Joanna Ortiz. It was that gold kind of really thick fabric. I'll take a break <laughs> just for a moment to talk about that dress. I didn't like it. Apparently it cost nine thousand pounds. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have given you ten pound for it. The colour, I mean it was the same shade as CP30. I don't think that dress would have looked good on anyone. This is not a criticism of Megan, um, to be honest. I think the material was too thick. When you zoom in on that material, it was so thick. I don't think it would have looked good on anyone. It looked sort of lumpy and crepey. Um, the the patterns sort of didn't align. Um, it looked very difficult to, to cut and work with as a material. The colour on Megan worked, I think. Like I say, it did look very CP3 because it's very shiny. It was that kind of gold lame sort of thing. Um, I think the colour looked really good, um, but I didn't like the actual cut. And that little cut out bit, dare I say it, it looked tacky influencers wear these cutout dresses and things. I just, for me, it fell short. But the biggest thing wasn't the cutout. The shape, I mean, the actual shape they were trying to go for would have worked, I think, with a different material, but not this really thick material. It looked like that stuff that's normally silver, but I think you can get it in gold as well, that you put behind radiators to insulate them or stuff that you would wrap around tanks, like heating tanks or something, or that like children would make pretend space suits out of. It looked like that. Um, so I don't know how on earth it cost almost £9,000 or was worth £9,000. Um, I think it looked hideous, uh, but I think it was the material that was the main reason why it looked hideous, to be quite honest. So um, yes, I was not a fan of that. Right, apparently the statement released by the NYPD was actually requested by Harry and Meghan. It wasn't volunteered by them, apparently. Unverified, but let's just read the statement. So they said on Wednesday evening, May the 16th, the NYPD assisted the private security team protecting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. There were numerous photographers that made their transport challenging. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination and there were no reported collisions, summonses, injuries or arrests in regard. There ends the statement. So it admits that their journey was challenging, but that nothing was illegal. So whether or not, again, Harry and Meghan have got a civil case to make, but in terms of a criminal, criminality, the police have said in a statement apparently demanded by Harry and Meghan, that it wasn't dangerous, basically. So take from that what you will. I probably should have started with this statement, but this is the one from Harry and Meghan themselves. So they said, 
Last night, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Miss Ragland were involved in a near catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. Their relentless pursuit lasting over two hours resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians and two NYPD officers. While being a public figure comes with a level of interest from the public, it should never come at the cost of anyone's safety. Dissemination of these images, given the ways in which they were obtained, encourages a highly intrusive practice that is dangerous to all involved. Okay, so again, um, I don't think we can dispute the fact that they were involved in a chase. I think catastrophic and aggressive paparazzi cannot be proven at this point. Uh, relentless pursuit, well, again, who who made it relentless? If they'd have just gone to their destination, um, it wouldn't have lasted the supposed two hours. Um, again, the paparazzi are claiming that Harry and Meghan are the ones that were driving dangerously, or rather their driver, perhaps on their instructions. Um, and of course, the uh, police have denied that anything dangerous actually happened. I think Harry and Meghan were trying to get an air of authenticity by trying to drag the police into it to support their claims. And the police have said, no, that, 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 that is just not the case of what happened. Um, I do agree that being a public figure um, should not come at the cost of anyone's safety. But again, was it Harry and Meghan themselves that were putting people's safety at risk? Um, I agree that distributing these images is not really, it, it does support bad practice, and I do think bad practice was in play here. I should also like to say that there has not been a public statement from the palace, either the King and Queen or the Prince and Princess of Wales, about any of this uh, incident. And uh, some Sussex supporters, such as Omid Scobie, are claiming that the royal family um, have not reached out to the Sussexes since today's news broke four hours ago, and that was posted 18 hours ago. Again, we don't know if that is true. What I suspect from all of this, and I'm going to try and summarise now, um, I will say that I do think that footage, uh, people's eyewitness statements will keep coming out over the coming days. So uh, I will probably be doing updates in future videos about this. Um, so watch this space. I'm sure the picture will become a lot more clear. To summarise, I do think that there was a chase. I think that choices made by the Sussexes resulted in perhaps some dangerous driving, but primarily by the Sussexes themselves. Um, and I do think they could have just chosen to have gone to their destination and just kind of sucked it up. I don't think they're in, in New York for very long. Uh, the paparazzi wouldn't have been able to have gone into wherever it was they were going. Uh, I'm sure they would have been barred either by restaurant staff or by hotel staff or or by their own private security. Um, so I don't think that was the that was the issue there. And then they would have obviously gone on their way the following day or however long they were staying for, and then returned back to Montecito unscathed. Um, but the good thing is that nobody was hurt. Um, you know. Although the Sussexes perceived it as being dangerous, the reality was that there were no arrests, that there were no injuries, uh, nobody ended up in hospital. Um, but a word of caution to Harry and Meghan, and I think this is sensible. If something like that happens again in the future, I and I think the best thing is just to carry on doing what you planned to do. Um, and not take the choice to be involved in any kind of car chase, because this could have ended very differently if it wasn't in New York, where, you know, you have the traffic lights every so often, um, and, the, and the police were not on hand quite readily, um, then it could have ended up very, 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 very badly. If they're following, you know, it's perhaps something that you have to suck up and get on with because of the position that you are in. And let's not forget, uh, I did have a comment in my previous video or the one before about uh, relevance. So 
I want to try and tackle that in this video. Harry and Meghan have dwindling relevance to the British royal family in terms of um, the day-to-day -day operations of the monarchy. When they were a member of the working royal family, they were forefront of it. They were very important to it and they would have continued to have been so. Just look at Princess Anne, Prince Edward, um, how Prince Andrew was before all of that happened. Um, siblings are very important to the monarchy. Um, so in that respect, he has lost relevance. He's not involved. Um, he's being almost excluded from, invited to, but you don't really, he doesn't have any involvement. So less relevance. In terms of interest and public interest, um, that is still high, as we can see. So he hasn't lost public interest, which is why moving away, trying to you know have more control, it's obvious he hasn't got control. He doesn't have full control uh, because the press attention is still there. There is still public consumption of Harry and Meghan. Um, so in that respect, they're relevant. Uh, but in, the, in terms of the, the monarchy, they are increasingly irre irrelevant. But the position remains the same. And that is why Harry is often held... Uh, to higher account than mere mortals, uh, because he is still, well, he is the son of a reigning sovereign, uh, not just now a grandson of a reigning sovereign, he is the son of a reigning monarch of England and everywhere else where, where Charles is king of. Um, that in itself brings him close to the throne. And, you know, unless by some miracle, Charles and Camilla have a child, which I don't. I don't think that's. I think that's almost completely impossible. Uh, and unless uh, William and Catherine have any further children, which at this stage I think is looking unlikely, Harry will maintain his place in the line of succession all the way through until William becomes king, or the whale. Any of the Wales children start to have children. So Harry's position is likely to remain unchanged in terms of the line of succession, for probably the next 20, 25 years, of which, um, you know, he is still up there in terms of line of succession. Um, so relevant in terms of his position, yes. Relevant in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, absolutely not. Um, but I, like I say, I think it just goes to show that Harry is not going to get away from the media and the press attention. Just because you've moved to a different country, it's still there. Um, and I would, I would really like to know at the heart of this, was this genuine or was this a setup? I am not trying to claim either way if it was or it wasn't. I am somebody who would genuinely like to know the truth behind it. Oh, to have been a fly on the wall in that taxi or one of those black SUVs. I would have I would have buzzed out of the SUV. I'd have followed them into the taxi and I'd, I'd have been listening the whole time. And I wish that I could bring you exactly what was being said. But like I say, I think we'll see lots of things coming out over the coming days. I can't wait to see some actual CCTV footage of this supposed chase. So we can actually see how fast they were going, who was there, how close they were to the cars, because all of this, you know, is important information. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here because I think we've been, I've been yakking at you for long enough. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me to you all and goodbye.